sir. You are listening to 95.9 FM WOVU. We got our first guest, Mr. Life. Uh-huh. We're a new floor. How we doing, my man? I'm doing all wise and civilized. All wise and civilized. I like that, man. Um, let's talk to the people. Let's let the people know why we are here, what you got going on exactly. Uh, actually, we uh, just started a flooring company uh, called Renew Flooring, and uh, we actually set up in 2013, but now we're, you know, uh, marketing heavy to the residential and uh, also commercial properties. Let me ask you something, man. Just say if I'm just trying to toss some shellacking on that wood grain and use some Murray's oil or something from back in the days, <laughs> what makes yours so different from, you know, that type of stuff? No, well, Murray's, you never want to put that on the floor. There we go. Yeah, so <laughs> there we uh, go. the things that we do different, we actually sand the floors down to the natural uh, state, and then you go back over the floor with like three coats of uh, polyurethane, or if you're going to stain the floor, you sand it down to the natural state, and then you put whatever color that you want to put on the floor. Okay. And then an additional uh, coats of finish. So you can toss anything on there if you want. Let's say if I want the wood to be gray, burgundy, yeah. Whatever the, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, you know, people now, they all into the HG, uh, HGTV uh -huh. thing, so they're doing dark floors, but you know, you got customers out here that's wanting to do the, uh, the, gray, the gray floors, so, yeah. Let, let me ask you this, when you talk, when you playing with that wood like that, Oh, say, sorry. Say, sorry. Oh, sorry. When, when playing with it like that, do you does it bring up the appraisal? Does it bring up the appraisal of the home? Well, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You gotta think, you gotta think about it. One, uh, it used to be the two main things. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the two main things that used to uh, bring that that people focused on was the bathrooms and kitchen. Well, today okay. now is. You know, floors, bathroom, and kitchen. As soon as you come into the house, as mm -hmm. soon as you come into the house, the first thing you're gonna see is the floor. Right. Right. So that's the the leeway into you know for selling the house. So you definitely want to make sure that you got the floors popping. So when they walk in, that'll be the first thing that they see because they're looking down. You know, and then they venture off into the kitchen and uh, in the bathroom. So if I if I purchase a home, it's all carpet. I pull up the carpet. I call you. You do what you do. Pretty much, the the price gonna go up a little bit. Oh huh? uh, well, you know what? If you're pulling up the carpet and prepping the floor, mm -hmm. then that'll save you a few dollars. So you definitely want to pull up the carpet, uh, remove carpet strips, uh, staples, and and nails. You know, because if we have to pull it up, then you know, of course, it's a extra fee for that. Or if we have to remove quarter round, then it's an extra fee. For that, yeah. what made you want to get into this uh, this floor again? <laughs> Actually, I did. Okay. But, you know, to be honest with you, I never saw myself uh, being somebody who actually did flooring. But I've always seen myself. Uh, I always had the entrepreneur mindset. So I fell into it because uh, with my own rental property, I started doing away with the carpet because every time the tenant moved out, I got to replace the carpet. Right. So I started removing carpet and I hooked up with uh, my partner who came in at the time. He was working for another company, getting paid, you know, uh, basically minimum wage to do the job. And uh, he was doing my floors on the side. And uh, so he did a couple of floors for me. He had a couple of other investors seeing the floors and uh, asked me like who did the floor. So of course with me being an entrepreneur, I ain't gonna just turn them up right on. You know, so I was like, yeah, I'll take care of it for you. And I just was doing it for this, this middle man and making, you know, a few dollars on, off on the side. But uh, as it started to grow, grow and, and grow, uh, I, one day I helped him. And so before I used to just drop him off, boom, he do the floors, I come back, they're done. Well, this time I helped him because it was about like a thousand square feet that we were doing. So I went in there and was doing the floors. I'm like, man, you doing all this work? And he was like, yeah. So I was like, man, we ain't charging enough. So I seen the opportunity from an entrepreneur uh, standpoint that, hey, this is a, you know, this is an avenue where we can actually, you know, grow this business. Now, is it any way that you can, Nikes make shoes called phone deposits and they kind of like scuff proof. You can pretty much do anything to them and they really won't scuff. With the floors, just say you got a, you an elderly person, your strip not there, 
to like it used to be and you trying to scoop or push a chair or a table across the floor? Is it something that you can put on that wood grain so it won't scratch or scrape that floor or, you know, come across that you, you know, you, I won't have to call yeah, you and be yeah. like, yo, come, you know, buff this baby out, the wood, you know? I'll tell you what, you come up with that, man. We, <laughs> we, we on and popping. No, uh, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, however, though, uh, the best thing you want to do in that case, like especially when you're doing dealing with uh, rental properties or like elderly, you want to keep your floors natural. Right. Natural, okay. So natural. So if they scuff it up, there's nothing to come in this palm sand and then go back over the floor with a clear coat. If you stain the floor and they scuff it and they go into that stain, there's no way that you can uh, uh, match stain. Right. There's no well, way that you can, you know, uh, uh, repair it without it being a mark that, that you're going to see. But with a natural floor, you could just rub it out go back over a clear coat and it blends blends right in but you can't do that with a, a stain floor would it look different by you definitely coming in? definitely it'll look different if it's a stain natural it, it will not however there is a uh, finish called uh, water base they have a hardener that you know protects the floor a little bit better okay, okay. you know uh, but you still can scratch the floor up so I was looking on the page and whatnot. Okay. Uh, along with the flooring, you do other home improvements as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yes. else we got? So we do uh, painting again. So I was doing uh, four renovations uh, before. You okay. know, so I got into the industry back in '92 when I bought my first house, and I was doing the rehab and, and flip. So I really got tired of doing the whole uh, rehab thing and just wanted to get off into something that, that was a niche. Okay. Something I can be in and out, in and out on. So when I'm going into the house and we're doing estimates for flooring, you know, I have some customers that need painting done or uh, drywall done, something I can be in and out on. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'll take on those jobs. But as far as electrical, plumbing, you know, HVAC and stuff like that, I really have no interest in. Okay. <laughs> Like the people that, um, like all the shows on HGTV about flipping houses, so that's mm -hmm. something that you did at one point, you said. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was it that made you kind of not want to do it anymore? Because they make it seem like it's so easy. I know it's not. Uh, well, so I was back in, back in 2005 when the real estate market really started booming. You know, everybody could buy a house and was flipping and got into the game. So I had about like 20 properties that I had amassed. So, uh, but I was invested in capital gain and not cash flow. So it's a difference being invested in capital gain and cash flow. Mm -hmm. Because now when the market affects you, on the capital gain price, then you, you're actually losing, and now you're, right. you're setting yourself up to actually you know, fail. So this way, I'm actually being uh, invested in cash flow today. So I still buy, I still purchase, mm -hmm. right? But I, it doesn't matter to me if I sell the property or not because I don't owe nothing on the property. You know, so now as I'm rebuilding back my portfolio, you know, if I got a vacant house, I don't have to worry about getting it rented out tomorrow mm -hmm. or just putting anybody in there just to collect a, you know, some rent. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On our show, we like to talk to the young people, like to talk to the youth. Um, you mentioned being an entrepreneur. Uh, doing floors, is that something that you would kind of try to push on the, the youngest as yes. far as a trade, as yes. far as something to get into that's profitable? Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, this past summer, we kind of like just fell into it. This whole thing we just felt, fell into. As far as with me just owning a flooring company, again, never wanted to be the best flooring guy out there, but I wanted to have the best company out there. Mm. So one of the things that we uh, did last summer, we started hiring some of the, the, the teams and they was working with us and we were, you know, showing them the, the trade. So this summer coming up, I want to be more intentional with uh, reaching out to our youth and having an apprenticeship where they can actually work hands-on with us and uh, also if they get you know uh, a certificate where they can actually get hired on with us after you know they they graduate school or whatnot but I still have a couple of teams that's uh, working um, what you call that uh, uh, part-time 
So I remember working part time when I was little, you know, right. growing up 16, 17 right. years old when Randall Mall was open. I was working at uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That was okay. my last job, by the way. Wow. You know, my last job was at 16, so I've always been an entrepreneur. But I want to give back. And, and again, for so in this, and you asked me that question as far as like what made me like not really want to do real estate anymore on, on that level. For me, it was just like, it was just all the it was all about my bottom line mm -hmm. and what I can kind of like get and, and make. Yeah. So this venture here has been totally different. Although, you know, uh, money is attached to the end, you know, uh, goal, but that's not my, that's not my focus. Mm -hmm. So I'm not chasing the check. I attract checks. I attract the money, mm -hmm. you know, so it's totally different yeah. today than yesterday. And I think that's why too, I had that fall back and that setback so I can move forward and how I'm moving forward now is totally, it's totally, totally different. You know, I want, I want to be able to provide the people who work for Renew Flooring to look at Renew Flooring like the Ford Motor. You know, when it's like, man, yo, yo your dad work at Ford Motor right, company? Right, so right. when it's like, yo, your dad work at Renew Flooring? Because they know we, we, we putting it out there like that. So that's what, because I was about to double back on that question or how, that statement that you put. In my mind, just thinking, I'm like, I would want to put out the best floors. I want to be the best floor guy, but you said you want to be the best company. Right, right. So okay. me personally, yeah. me personally, I'm not looking to be the best flooring guy personally. Okay. Right? But the company itself is going to be the best flooring company out there, and I'm going to be the head of that organization, yeah. making sure that we're the best out there. Yeah, everything is definitely about quality. We do more than what we get paid for. I had a... Uh, customer that went out of town, uh, they was out of town for 10 days. Uh, when they came back, not only was their floors done, but I bought them new linen for each bed, you know, so we, we, we set their bed up, we, we uh, okay. uh, dressed it up, and we, I bought balloons, set different balloons, they had, they got a boy and a girl, so I bought you know, a princess balloon for, for them. Uh, we cleaned out the bathroom, something that they didn't pay for. Right. But I always believe in offering more service you know, than what you actually get paid for. Looked about you the know. presentation, like when they come home. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Oh, they yeah. loved it. They were just like, wow, they was re really over excited. It's like, man. And they'll use yeah. it for everything. Yeah. Forward, that, yeah. That's going to go definitely. a long way. You best believe yeah. they didn't told a million people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything oh, yeah. is word of mouth. Yes, sir. How, how long y'all been going now? How long has it been? Uh, so we, I, we actually incorporated in two, um, 2013. Uh, so we've been going for about like five, six years. So we started at the end of 2012, incorporated 2013, and uh, it's been it's, it's been pushing. It's funny when we first set up. Uh, as soon as I made that investment with buying all the the equipment and stuff like that, because these machines are not cheap, you know. So I made that investment, man. It's like the business just stopped. <laughs> I promise you. It was like it just stopped. So I seen the opportunity and it was just like, man, as soon as I made that investment, man, it just like stopped. And the guy who was um who I partnered up with, you know, he was late on his rent. He was asking me, I was, you know, having to, you know, make some ends meet with, you know, my, my uh, outside investments outside of uh the company just to make sure that, you know, he was getting his, his bills paid. See, that's the part that, that, that I love, man, with, with everybody's journey. Um, of course, we all, the world loves the, the, the great success and whatnot, but so many people, when you on that road and you, you're inspiring people and you're trying to lead people to, to, you know, chasing their dreams or whatnot, those stories about how just how rough it gets, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Where, where easily you could have been like, oh man, yeah, we gotta, like you said, my man was behind on his payments mm -hmm. with his mortgage. Um, you know, it's just like that other interview we did with, um, you know, Belargo. But, you know, oh, yeah. a lot of times, you know, people, they, they don't, they just see like the glory. They don't see when your account is overdrafted or mm -hmm. they don't see when you gotta pick between this bill or the investment or, you know what I mean? Right. And, and they may see when you persevere through all that, they see the end result where you may be riding nice or you may be looking nice now, you yeah. know, but I, I believe those those stories are, are so impactful, man. I, I love talking about those moments, man. I think yeah. they're character builders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like you're going to go through some adversity. You're going to go through some challenging times. And I think a lot of times, 
it be God trying to test your faith to really see if you got that exactly. belief in self. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You, you gotta think nothing nothing comes into existence without first going through the labor. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like even with with the woman when she could see you know, she carries a child for nine months, mm -hmm. right? And so she's going through that, you know, that 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 phase. Preparation. You know what I mean? And and so so as it as life and anything that we do in life, you're going to go through those different turmoils or challenges or obstacles. I I like to say because nothing you plant a seed, you plant a seed, you don't see what it go through. Right. You just see the the after when it yeah, blooms, right, right. right? You know, so I mean, for those who out there uh, listening, it's like yo, you just gotta keep going. You gotta keep, you know, moving towards whatever goal that you set. But also, too, the goals that you set, it's very important that you write those things down. You know, what I mean, you have to create your own blueprint, and don't worry about how it looks or if it look right far as uh, you know, like you're about to go and, and take it to a bank or something, or somebody's going to read it. It has to be your own words or pictures. Like I start this thing, I, I remember staying home in uh, 2016, uh, and I just created, okay, here's where we want to be at financially, right? And then I broke it down. So it's like if somebody gives you a car engine and parts and say, put this together, mm -hmm. you ain't going to know what to do. But if I gave you a car engine that's put together and tell you to take it apart, then now you're gonna label it and then you'll be able to put it back together because you didn't label it the same thing with your goals. You say what it is that you want, then you break it down. And after you break it down, then you start taking action and you put it, put it back together. What's the, um, what's some of the goals that you set out for yourself and for the company at, at the end of the day? Like what, what is it that you're really trying to do and achieve as far as um, Renew Floor? Again, Renew Floor in this uh, household name, uh, it's way bigger than your life uh, today. I believe w uh, that I got, um, for me, the more I help others achieve their goals and the things that they want, I'll have everything that I want. Because the only way for me to get to where it is that I, I'm truly looking to go, and I, like, I challenge my, challenge my team. I'm like, yo, what is it that you want? What type of car you want? Where do you want to live? What do you want monthly, monthly income? Because I know where mine's at, you know? I'm looking at Renew Four and being a $10 million company. So if it's gonna be a $10 million company, then I mean, I gotta help and I gotta create some millionaires. You know what I'm saying? So Renew Four ain't gonna get the 10 million by itself. So what is it that you want? You want $5,000 a month? You want $10,000 a month? Give me that goal and, 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 and I'll show you how to get there. So uh, that's that's it for for us. Renew flooring, household name. Renew flooring, uh, being uh, like wide in, in, in Cleveland, having other uh, uh, guys that's joining up with Renew flooring, having their own company or having a subsidiary company to Renew flooring, to where we're doing all the marketing and sales, and then they're out there doing the you know doing the work. I like that man. It's like the message goes with your name. You speaking life into these people. You know what I'm saying? Encourage, Appreciate motivate that. them. You know what I'm saying? The whole nine. I think that's how winners win. Yes, sir. Building that dream team, having the right pieces, you know, with you. That's riding with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to see other people succeed, man. At the end of the day, that's the only way you really gonna truly win on the inside. That's it. You know. With that being said, man, shoot out your social media, your contacts, anything that you may have going on. All right, your life uh, at RenewFlooringOhio.com. That's the website. Also, you can uh, email us at RenewFlooringOhio at gmail.com. Give us a call. You're looking for an estimate where we renew all floors, and behold, we make all floors new. Give us a call at 216-644-8563. Hey, this is your boy, T. Moore. We're going to check in and check out for a high second, pay some bills if you will. You're listening to CSC 216, a.k.a. CSC Posse. We'll be back.